Hey guys, Sherri Ann Richardson from Experimental Homestead or Exotic Gardening, SherriAnnRichardson.com and biannual blogathon bash.com and welcome to our daily vlog. Um, I'm seeing a lot of questions, especially by people here in Indiana, that are asking if it's too late to start their garden because, of course, we've had rain and more rain. A little bit more rain in case you didn't get enough. <laughs> um, and we still have temperatures down into the 40s. So, what I want to say is while normally we would have our gardens in by the 15th of May at the latest, most of us don't. And a lot of the seeds that were planted rotted. Some of the plants that were planted actually died because it was too much rain. And because there's clay soil here in Indiana, you really don't want to work it when it's wet because it literally turns to a brick concrete type of material. So I do not have my garden planted yet. Am I worried? No. Am I going to have a later than normal harvest? Yes. Am I going to harvest as much? Probably not, but I don't know that. Um, it's been a really wet, cold spring, which could mean that we're going to have a warmer than normal fall. Now, of course, no guarantees on that. But because there are options for us, frost covers, uh, cold frames, if you have nothing else, tomato cages covered with six mil plastic that's held down on the ground, um, there are many, many options to extend the harvest into the fall and even into the winter if that's what you want to do. So my plants are in the greenhouse. My seeds are still in their seed containers because I don't have everything started yet. And it's just more practical to start some things in ground than to try to start them in little pots or containers or soil blocks or whatever. So I'm waiting. I The small garden needs to be tilled once more and the big garden needs two more tillings to make it ready to plant. So what I'm doing is being patient. Um, really, technically, you can plant clear up to the 4th of July and still get a harvest. It, again, depends on what crops you're planting. So tomatoes and peppers, watermelons, yeah, you know, they take a longer growing season, corn. But the farmers haven't planted either. They haven't been in their fields. They have not plowed. They have not done anything. Again, too wet. So here's my advice to everybody. If you really, really, really feel like you need to get your garden in, you have a couple choices. You can build raised beds and you can buy soil in bags and you can put it in and you can plant that way. Another option that I haven't tried, but I suspect will work, is to lay down plastic. I would suggest clear plastic on top of your garden area. Hold it down on all the edges and let it solarize and dry out your soil. Now, does that mean that some of the soil is still not going to be wet? No, it doesn't. Um, if you have a yard like mine where you have standing water around your garden, as that soil dries out, it's going to wick that moisture right back in. If you have an area that's, say, on a slope or that's pretty well dry, but you just need it a little drier, then yes, I suspect laying down plastic is going to work, especially if you get some nice hot days because that plastic is going to really cause that soil to heat up. And as it heats up, that moisture is going to evaporate, of course, on top of the plastic. But if you remove that plastic, then, you know, it's going to come out into the air and it's going to go away. So it's all in what you want to do. You know, again, raised beds are a great idea if you have a small area 
and you just want to get going on your garden because they're going to let you do that. Raised beds drain so much faster than in-ground soil. But if you have a big area like what we have where there's just no way raised beds are practical, you could try the plastic or you could just wait. My choice is I'm just going to wait. This rain can't last forever. There are a lot of crops you can plant in containers and still get a harvest. And, you know, like I said, there is still time. Um, it's a little off this year, but that doesn't mean that, you know, forget about gardening this year. It doesn't mean that at all. And to go along with this, um, I did republish a post on exotic gardening about dealing with this because a, another option is container gardening. Now, the uh, post that I published is called Benefits of Container Gardening During Changeable Weather Conditions, and I will link that in here um, so that you guys can easily get to it if you want. And like I said, it talks about container gardening because that's an option for a lot of people. You know, they can go buy the pots or maybe they already have the pots. They can put the soil in, they can put the plants in and they can grow their flowers, herbs or vegetables regardless of what the weather is. You know, they can bring them inside if it's too cold out and just use grow lights. They can take them outside on nice days. If they wanna grow cool weather crops like lettuce or peas, they can move the container into a shaded area of their yard so that it doesn't die off from the heat. Um, and it is a great way to get you around, you know, gardening issues with funky weather like what we're having. Also, depending on the size of the container, you can grow quite a bit of plants in containers. Uh, for example, I have some five gallon buckets that I got from the deli at Meyer. actually a friend got them for me and they have holes big holes drilled in the bottom um, we used a keyhole saw to put holes in the bottom of it filled it with some soil and I have one tomato plant in that container now theoretically I could plant some lettuce around that maybe I could put a few uh reddish seed in, maybe some basil plants, and really fill that container out. But instead I've chose just to have the one tomato plant in it. And it is actually in my greenhouse right now. It is getting flowers. So I'm still gonna have some early tomatoes, even though my other tomatoes are, they're big enough to go outside, but the ground is nowhere near ready for them. So, um. The other advantage to this is if you want to try to grow, say, tomato plants in your house during the winter, a saucer could be put underneath of the container to catch the water. You could bring it in, you could use a grow light or put it in a really sunny south facing window and potentially still get tomatoes. The thing you need to know about growing tomatoes inside, especially in greenhouse conditions, is they are very, very prone to white fly. So if you're going to bring your plants inside, you need to watch for things like that because believe me, the white flies find them. Um, another great advantage of containers is, of course, you can, if you're having high winds or tornado, tornadoes, like is going through a lot of areas right now, you can move your plants to a protected area and not have to worry about them being damaged because they're in the ground and you can't build that big of a windbreak. Um, also, container gardenings can help you save on water. Now, you do have to water them more sometimes than when they're in the ground. But in comparison to a big garden plot versus a small container, they are going to take a lot less water. And you can also take advantage of microclimates. So if you know where the microclimates are in your yard, you can move the containers into those areas and sometimes get a longer season um, because maybe you have an area that's warmer and you can put a little bit of frost cover over the plant if you're worried about frost. 
and but that extra warmth is going to give the plant more of what it needs and this is especially true for like tropical plants or you know heat loving plants like tomatoes and peppers so again a lot of times just start thinking outside of the box if you don't want to be patient definitely check out this article for some ideas and if you have questions or comments, leave them below because I'm always happy to talk about gardening and help you be able to get your garden grow going, even though you don't have the most favorable weather conditions right now. Uh, please subscribe, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments below. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great night.